Hey guys, it's Jeremy here from the Ontario Regiment RCAC Museum in Oshawa and today we're going to have a closer look at two really exciting and rare Canadian military vehicles that just arrived at the museum. So the vehicle behind me here is uh, has a nickname, it's known as the El Camino AVGP and I think you can see with the uh, dropped back here why people give it the nickname the El Camino. This is actually a very special Canadian military vehicle and a prototype uh, that was developed between 1999 and then finally canceled and retired in 2005. And what it's part of is the AVGP or Armored Vehicle General Purpose Life Extension Program. So at, uh, at the end of the service of the AVGPs, you know, they came into service in 1978 and they were retired from regular service, even from training in 2004. Uh, we are, the Canadian Armed Forces were moving over uh, to a new generation of labs. So we have the Bison and we have the Lab 3 coming online uh, in 1999 and moving forward. The Canadian Armed Forces had a fleet of over 200 ABGP Grizzlies, that's the APC version, and they are trying to find a new use for this platform. Uh, with the new lab variants, they didn't yet have um, all of the equipment they needed to service the fleet out in the field. And those are known as MRT units or mobile repair teams. So the vehicle we're looking at here is actually an in-between vehicle, a concept uh, to take the AVGP chassis and turn them into the MRT vehicles for a new Canadian lab fleet. So as you can see from the front of the vehicle, it very much looks like your standard AVGP or, or generation one LAV. Uh, this was actually based off of the Grizzly. So they kept the shell, they kept the power plant, but they repurposed the rest of the vehicle. Uh, they cut away the crew compartments, they updated the electronics inside, uh, updated the hatches, and this is actually a mobile repair team vehicle tech vehicle. So it has a crane on the back, it's a five ton crane, and also that big empty space. That is actually where a workshop pod uh, would be placed. It could move out into the battlefield, drop that workshop right into the field so it could service the Bison and Lav 3 vehicles. And here's the second variant of uh, the AVGP Life Extension, and this is actually a Weapons Tech MRT. So it also has the crane, but instead of having the El Camino uh, workshop on the back, you can see that it actually has all of the bins uh, for tooling for the Weapons Techs to go out in the field. Here you can see the crane controls for the five ton crane. And you know, since this also is an early 21st century vehicle, it actually also had a remote control uh, crane control. So there's a, a, a set where the operator could take the controls, stand back from the vehicle and operate the crane to lift equipment in the field. It can lift the equipment, uh, you know, an engine or something out of, uh, M113 or a LAV and also could store the components in the back of the open space of the AVGP. These vehicles actually have an incredibly long name. We've been referring to them as the AVGP that we all know, the Armored Vehicle General Purpose, but they were considered at the time the first generations of the new LAV program, the LAV. Uh, and their name is actually WLAV L-E-M-R-T, an exceptionally long name. So that's Wheeled Light Armored Vehicle Life Extension Program Mobile Repair Team. That's also why they have uh, that short form nickname, uh, the AVGP El Camino. So how these came uh, into service uh, is an incredible story of Canadian engineering. At the time, uh, Canada did not have the required MRT vehicles for the field to service the second and then third generation of uh, LAVs and they wanted to repurpose the AVGP fleet uh, that was coming out of service. Only four of each of these vehicles were actually produced and put through trials and exercises with the Canadian Armed Forces here in Canada up until 2005. Then they were actually given to the Royal Canadian uh, Mounted Police as parts, uh, the RCMP acquired some Grizzly AVGPs uh, as armored vehicles for police use, and two of these MRTs 
were given to them just as parts. They sat in a warehouse in Ottawa for decades, uh, were never touched. The rest of the prototypes were destroyed. And then they were finally purchased uh, through government surplus by a private individual. That individual, recognizing the uniqueness of these vehicles and that unique period in the story they played in the development of Canada's lav fleet, uh, decided that they had to be coming to a museum and this year generously donated them to the Ontario Regiment Museum. That's just a very quick look at the WLAV LE MRT series of vehicles. We're going to have tank talks on these this winter. You'll be able to come into the museum, have a closer look. We'll have all the hatches open. Uh, we'll compare them to the early AVGP fleet and then later, obviously, the LAV 3. What's incredible about these prototype vehicles is that although this program was cancelled in 2005, many of the concepts that were developed by GM Defence and General Dynamics Land Systems in these W labs, you would later see on modern Canadian MRT vehicles built on the LAV 3 and later chassis. So an interesting part of Canadian military history showing Canadian development and R&D and how they could adapt an older technology uh, to meet a, an updated need for the armed forces. So if you like this series, uh, hit subscribe, like us on our Facebook page. We're going to have detailed looks at these vehicles and their history in future videos. See you again.